thank you for joining in. Um, so this morning, the idea for this morning was to uh, uh, to get a group of people together to talk about weaving and the state of weaving in the province. And so we've got a bunch of people who've joined us from all over the place uh, across the province. And I, I think there's some people joining in from beyond as well. Uh, my name is Dale Jarvis. For those of you who I haven't met, I'm the folklorist for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. And part of my work uh, involves working with communities, however those communities are defined, to preserve uh, and safeguard mm, traditional knowledge and uh, skills, crafts, that kind of stuff. So a while back we had a, we run a podcast called Living Heritage and Jessica came on and was interviewed by uh, one of our staff people and raised this question, you know, where are the looms? Uh, who's out there? Who's doing what uh, in the province? Where are the looms and where are the weavers? So with that, uh, I'm going to turn things over to Jessica. Um, we have a few people lined up uh, who are going to take about five minutes five each. Minutes. And then they'll, uh, we'll all have a kind of a, an opportunity to ask some questions at the end. So for now, I'm going to turn things over to. Um, I feel like I've lost my own video. I'm going to pin my video. There we go. There you go. Okay. Uh, it's so weird seeing myself. Hello. Uh, my name is Jessica. I am a textile artist here in the province. Um, and uh, I am passionate about weaving, but uh, in, in many forms. So I actually learned to weave at the Anna Chubbin Center at CNA through, uh, you know, Steffi and Katie who are here on the uh, uh, conference call as well. And uh, I have to admit, I did not like it at first. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the worst thing in the world, um, but it, it became something that I was really interested in, and um, so therefore, um, you know, I went to NASCAD and studied there, and I just graduated, which was exciting, and I've gone um, abroad many times to um, take weaving classes and to learn from other people, but what I find is, you know, I keep leaving the province, and I keep going to do these things, but I feel like I don't know enough about our weaving community that we, or our community as a craft whole in, in this province and for me weaving. And so um, just in the past few years, this is new for me is to kind of take my weaving from uh, not just practice based, but practice based and research based. Um, and through predominantly primary research techniques, which is really oral conversations and hearing about people's stories and how you know, weaving or craft has influenced their life or, um, you know, the, the history of families here in the province. And so um, with that, I did a lot of research in, you know, to the Jubilee Guilds and, um, and the Women's Institute I interviewed some people. And uh, it was fascinating to kind of hear how they talked about craft. Um, they didn't really understand what I was asking. Um, because to them craft meant, you know, a lot of important things like sustainability and giving back to the community. And it was really phenomenal to see how weaving um, has essentially fed back into Atlantic communities like, like Newfoundland's outpour communities and Labrador, um, which I just thought I find really fascinating. And so if you compare that to uh, the more contemporary context that we live in now, um, for myself, I'm using weaving as art and um, maybe for some utilitarian purposes, but it, it's really interesting to see um, kind of how we've come in the province. And so with that, however, as I'm kind of doing my research and reaching out and trying to see, well, you know, who's still weaving, who's still here, um, you know, it's, it's sometimes kind of hard to find people um, as we are maybe Po um, poked away in these little outpour communities or you know people have passed on as time goes on um, which is a concern because maybe we're not getting that information or knowledge out to you know the next generation uh, but I think right now there's a little bit of a, a makers movement happening and people are becoming interested again and and I find that very evident because I teach as well in my studio and I'm getting a lot of people in inquiring and interested, um, but more for like, you know, DIY projects or like to keep themselves busy or, you know, for their kids. And, and I think that's really great. And so um, I'm just kind of inspired to see who's in the community still, see if there are weavers um, still making, what they're making and why they're making. Um, another part of that as well is, you know, while doing the history on Anna Templeton, for example, who was a field worker with the Jubilee Guilds, 
uh, meaning that she traveled to a lot of communities um, to teach not just weaving other crafts, uh, but as we're talking about weaving, I'm going to focus on that, um, where she took her loom to go to these communities for people to copy and make them. Um, and then, you know, taught women how to weave and men how to build the looms and, and therefore a lot of these things are handmade. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, and they, and they may not be perfect looking, um, but, you know, they, they had a purpose and they supported communities and families. And uh, it's just fascinating to think, well, you know, if, if this one person traveled by boat or by, you know, whatever means of transportation we had back in the day um, to take this loom and to transport it and, and for other people to make other looms, it's kind of like, well, where are they now? What, are, you know, what has happened to those looms or do they still exist or were they, are they hiding in people's houses? Like, it's just really interesting to kind of find like the lineage or like the genealogy of these looms that have kind of been passed down from person to person. Um, and for example, I have a loom right now that is completely handmade and I'm, I'm, I know that because it's very raw and very uh, not clean. Um, you know, I got from a friend who got from someone on the West Coast, who got it from this person in, you know, on the North Peninsula. Like, it's, it's just kind of fascinating. Um, so the goal today is just to have a conversation with some people who are, um, you know, key supporters in the uh, craft community here, but all have different perspectives of craft or, and, and weaving. Some come from a professional background, some are educators who have been educators, and uh, others use it as a hobby, um, and then also for performance art, which I think is phenomenal. So I guess this is just a way to kind of, you know, bring everyone together and get some stories and, and hear and, and answer questions. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what I think today is going to be about. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe uh, we'll turn things over if we can to uh, Katie. Katie, if you're there, to just to give us a little bit of uh, uh, chat about your involvement with uh, kind of instruction and, and your knowledge of the, the weaving history in the province. <laughs> I'm writing that down so I don't go off track, which I could. <laughs> um, so can everyone see me okay? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I was an instructor for um, at the Anna Templeton Center with the textiles program um, for probably 28 years. Um, and but before that, um, I was a, a field worker. So I was one of the last field workers um, under Anna Templeton, and so I was a field worker for 10 years. So I traveled around the province. Uh, teaching various things, including weaving. And so I have, uh, like Jessica, who's done good, good research, um, I have some sort of firsthand and very historical knowledge about what was going on in the province when I was traveling around and a little bit more since then, because, you know, I stopped traveling, so I didn't see as many looms. But there certainly were, within the Women's Institute, you know, um, a, a good... Um, following or, or a good collection of weavers in, in central places. So they would, um, Gander and Springdale were, uh, were very strong and there were some in, in Glenwood. And at, at one point there was a, a weaving and a craft program out in Stephenville that was also another um, instructional uh, thing in, in, the, uh, in the college out there. Um, and so there, and, and I met a lot of looms. Um, I had a lot of looms. I've donated looms to the uh, to the rooms, and so there's looms in their collection that are pretty old. And um, yeah, they were all the two of them that I donated were were handmade. And every once in a while, we get in the in the school when I was teaching, we'd have people come and try to sell a loom, and we would put up a a, a thing um, a post. But often it just ended up like, could you please get it out of my basement? It's been there. It was my grandmother's or I remember using it. And so there's a lot of looms that have traveled and have ended up um, sort of going into different homes, just like the one that uh, Jessica, you're talking about. But the, the practice today, there are not, there's not that many weavers out there. You know, it's it, there's a, a few, and I can I can name the ones. Like it's fantastic that we have so many people um, talking today because we'll find out who's weaving and and who's not. Because you know, I only know of a few, and um, and it's a very um, 
small practice and, and some people are probably weaving for themselves and weaving uh, some, a few of them are weaving for, uh, for industry. So is that good enough? Yeah, I think that's great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, maybe with that, because we're talking about old looms, uh, Joelle, uh, I know your loom has a story. Uh, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you're doing? Sure. Uh, my name is Joelle Blanford. I'm a textile artist living in Twillingate, Newfoundland. Um, I own and operate Nature's Threads NL, and manage the artists and market Twillingate and beyond. I'm a weaver. Um, I have a hundred year old loom that came from Random Island. It's currently warped for uh, placemats and table runners. I use it mainly for demonstrations in the summer months at the Artisan Market. Um, visitors enjoy interacting with it, learning uh, about its history and its heritage. Also own an antique spinning wheel. Currently I've been exploring uh, color and creating fleece chunky that I use for tapestry and wall hangings. Um, I have a weaving workshop planned for the future. Uh, it's going to focus on not tying traditions and keeping the weaving traditions alive here in Newfoundland. Um, with Nature's Threads, I'm currently uh, weaving rope baskets, uh, trivets, and mats. My studio is located in downtown Twillingate, inside of a traditional fishing stage at the edge of the ocean. I study textile art and design at the Anna Templeton Center with Katie and Stephanie. Um, from there, I graduated and went to Kitty Vitty Village Plantation. Um, I did an artist residency there for two years. And then I packed my loom into my van and moved back to Twillingate, which is my hometown, to pursue a career in arts and tourism. I dream of starting a small fiber farm one day. I'm hoping to share, spin, naturally dye, and weave with my own fleece. My inspiration to weave, spin, and create comes from nature and living by the sea. Um, I'm currently using social media platforms like Instagram to stay connected to all the other weavers in the world right now. Um, how did you find your loom? I found my loom on the buy and sell. Uh, an older woman had it posted, her husband had passed away, and uh, I wrote the ad and went and picked it up. I've been trying to figure out the name of the man who was the weaver. Uh, I've lost track of it a little bit. I can't remember exactly, but I do have some of his old pattern books here. And there's a name written inside of one of the exercise books, and it says Leonard Leahy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he's the weaver or if he's the person who gave maybe the patterns to this weaver. His wife had told me that uh, he used to weave placemats, Newfoundland tarred and placemats for Nonia. Okay, yeah, I think that whole random island, um, that whole random island weaving story is one that needs to be kind of expanded upon a, a little bit. My, my wife's grandmother was one of the random island uh, uh, weavers. And, and so, uh, yeah, I'm interested in that, that particular history as well. Uh, Anna, are you there? Oh, she, yeah, she's there. <laughs> Uh, she's muted. I'm mute. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Anna, and I am a textile artist also. I would identify further probably more as a dye artist than anything, um, but I also weave. I did the textile studies program. I graduated five years ago, wholly, um, and majored in weaving and print and dye. I do have a loom. When I was in the program, sometimes what would happen is we would get an email from the staff and they would say, somebody's trying to get rid of a very big loom, who wants it? And normally there would be, we, would, we all kind of had, anyone who got one, um, everyone who wanted one was able to get one. So I was, I got a Leclerc floor loom um, and it was a daughter who was getting rid of her mother's loom after she had passed away. I do have her name somewhere in my emails but I haven't been able to find it yet and basically I was given six boxes of yarn and I was given her loom and all of her patterns and little notes and things she had in exercise books. Uh, most of it was stored in a unheated garage, so unfortunately a lot of it was kind of destroyed, which was too bad. Uh, but the loom is great and I still use it today. I also do little weaving projects and things on tapestry frames. 
Um, I don't necessarily weave for production or anything like that because I've kind of found that uh, I had a space in Bonavista and now I have a space down on Duckworth Street um, in the Posey Rocco. And I've just sort of found that when you are a full-time craftsperson, it's really easy to take all the things you love about craft and your embroidery and your dyeing and your printing and that really turns into work um, because it's something you're doing to pay your bills. Uh, so I've kind of reserved weaving for hobby or love. So um, right now I'm weaving a baby blanket for a baby that's on the way, uh, my brother-in-law. Um, so I kind of have been using weaving sort of as a passion project for a while. And I've put little details into gallery pieces that I've done um, just to kind of keep myself on deadlines, which I think is a little bit important to kind of always be weaving um, and creating new ideas. Uh, I have had some interesting conversations with people and looms um, on the south coast of Labrador and also on Fogo Island. There was looms, uh, tabletop and floor, uh, and a lot of people really interested to learn how to weave, but nobody in their communities that could actually teach them how to do it. Um, and I was never really in any of those places for long enough to, especially on Fogo Island, to establish what I like how to actually teach them. Um, but there's definitely interest and conversations going on in those communities, which is really important. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Hey, thank you. Um, next up, we've got Stephanie Stoker, who I'm hoping can tell us a little bit about kind of more of that educational piece. Now? Go for it. You hear me now? You can hear me now. Um, right. So um, my name is Stephanie Stoker, and I am uh, I'm an instructor at the um, College of the North Atlantic Textile and Apparel Design Program. Um, I worked under Katie Parnum for many years, um, and I was actually a student like Joelle and Anna and uh, Jessica came up through the program, like Jessica went on to uh, NASCAD uh, and finished my education or did more education there. Hopefully I'm not finished my education. Um, and so I uh, presently am the teacher or the instructor for the weaving uh, portion of our program, as well as design and drawing and color theory. Uh, so I work with students on a daily basis, uh, sort of teaching the uh, the basics of weave, both tapestry, off loom, and um, on loom weave techniques. Um, also, we do uh, we do work in uh, weave analyzing, so having the students um, be able to look at an existing weave structure or cloth and uh, be able to figure out its pattern from just looking at it, which I think is really important. Um, and also being able to design their own weave structures as well, uh, both simple and complex. Um, so we go through two years of that. And besides that, um, I guess I call myself a weaver because I love weaving and I teach weaving. I unfortunately don't get to do a lot of weaving um, because of all the things in life. Um, but I do it when I can and when I do make work as a textile artist. A lot of the times it does include weaving as well as embroidery techniques and other uh, other uh, different craft techniques that um, uh, are well practiced within you know within the province uh, certainly and um, I, I have one of these sort of hundred year old uh, looms in my house as well uh, Katie Parnum and I I know in these two instances we got the phone call and we ran over in her little car to people's homes and and grab parts and bits and brought them back to the Anna Templeton Center and sat down on the floor and tried to put these things together and uh, so uh, one of them actually it went together in my home uh, I haven't been able to make it work yet it's a handmade I think I've figured out it's a Scandinavian design, and so it's a little, it's a little finicky, uh, but it was gorgeous. It was taken out of a house on Circular Road um, when uh, new owners moved in and were renovating and found it. Um, Katie may know more, remember more of the story, but from what I remember, 
there were three sisters and uh, the father made a loom for each of the sisters. And the loom that we took out of the house was what belonged to the last sister who had died uh, recently, I think in her 90s. Um, and so I took that loom home and it, uh, it's a treasured structure in one of my rooms that one day will make beautiful things. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's, that's sort of my story. Uh, and I weave, I weave not for utility all the time. I weave like Jessica sometimes for art, but I like the idea of, um, making things, uh, useful and, and, uh, reusing materials, uh, really important to me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my story. Great. Thank you. And I think, uh, Kaylee. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, I don't know if we're going to flip over on the screen. Um, anyways, it's so nice to see everybody's faces. Um, I apologize for uh, my Zoom name here. Um, so, <laughs> so my name is Kaylee Bryan. I am, I am a weaver, but I also am a contemporary artist and a performance artist. And I am a drag performer, and I was recently hosting a silly drag brunch on Zoom, and that is why my name looks like it does. Um, but anyways, uh, it's so nice to see all the faces of these beautiful weavers who I either learned to weave from or wove alongside at the Anna Templeton Center. Um, I did not uh, complete the College of the North Atlantic uh, Textiles program, but I haunted the Anna Templeton Center for about for years um, as the program and promotions coordinator for the ATC. Um, and as part of that, I was uh, inundated in this beautiful world of textiles, which um, Katie, especially Katie Parnum, very generously uh, taught me how to weave there alongside uh, Sarah Minty was instrumental in that process, as was Steffi, as was Jessica and Anna and Joelle was there a lot. Like uh, we are a lovely little Buzzy Bee community of weavers at the time. Um, so I don't have a great deal of historical knowledge uh, locally about weaving. I primarily use weaving as um, an element in my contemporary art practice. So uh, my relationship to the uh, process is very much um, kind of has to do with uh, managing mental health actually and with sort of transmuting um, things like anxiety into a, a physical process which can uh, produce something beautiful at the same time as it helps to kind of calm that experience. Um, and I began weaving because I loved looms as objects. I'm a very uh, puzzle-based mechanical individual and that's where my, um, uh, I find uh, objects like looms to be very endearing, but I had no idea what they did. So when I started working at the Anna Templeton Center, I walked up to the third floor and it was filled with looms. And I was like, what does this do and how can I use it? And, uh, and then I, I saw it happening and I uh, was, you know, uh, in, invited into that world and I fell very in love with weeping. Um, much like what Anna has said about turning things you love into work, um, I went through a very brief spell where I thought that I was going to become a production crafts person. Um, very, very brief. And after a quick investment in that, I, I discovered that I didn't want to turn my weaving practice into a business uh, practice. So uh, most of what I weave is either utilitarian, but I consider them, they're always for specific people. So I consider them to be more like portraits. Every fiber that I choose, the pattern, the design, the, the object itself, what is the cloth going to be and how will it be used? I determine all that based on who I'm weaving it for. Um, and I find that that creates a sort of intimacy between me and the cloth and the receiver of that object. And then the other side of that is that I use uh, weaving as um, as a sort of metaphoric practice uh, in my in my art. So I have used um, hand woven cloth, like cloth that I've woven in installation work. And I've also uh, used the process of weaving in performance and video art. Um, and for me, that has a lot to do with the relationship between the body and embodiment and fabrication. 
and the relationship to the object and the relationship to to the fibers and to the cloth. Um, in that vein, uh, the thing in terms of, of the sort, sort of like weaving history that really um, riles me up is the, the historic through line from weaving processes through to, you know, in industry, industrial revolution and the development of the, the Jacquard loom, which uses a punch card system to um, operate the, the um, uh, raising and lowering of the threads and how this, uh, the punch cards basically had a space or no space in the card and that um, this was uh, the, the model for designing binary code, which um, was the, the basis for, for developing computer coding. And there's a certain uh, feminist bent on that in that it was one Ada Lovelace who kind of uh, took some of the original notes for the production of that very first uh, written computer code or the concept rather for computer code. And she really, she took a, a volume this thick and her notation was four times as thick on how to actually make that code functional. Um, so that historic through line I think is really important and it connects the history of weaving and the practice of weaving to much more contemporary forms of like digital recording. So we have, in my eyes, weaving as a record of the relationship of the body to the tool all the way through to the digital recording like we're doing right now as a relationship, uh, an intangible relationship of the body to the tool. Um, it just waxed poetic there, but uh, anyways, it's so nice to see all your faces, beautiful weavers. That's it for me. <laughs> Thanks, Kaylee. Uh, I know we have a, a, a couple other people who have joined in, um, and I've been talking to some of those people as well. Uh, Renee, are you are you there right now? Can you talk a little bit, maybe about kind of the the West Coast? Okay, um, happy to do that. I moved to the West Coast. Uh, I was there for the summer of 1970, and when I say West Coast, I mean Woody Point, Bond Bay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, okay, good. And um, so the, that's actually where I learned how to weave. And at the time, there were two women who ran um, a craft store, Gisela Westphalen and um, uh, Pat McLeod. And they, Pat had worked for the Grenfell, no, not the, yes, worked at the Grenfell Mission. She worked in St. Anthony. She was a, um, occupational therapist and she had a weaving background and so they were very interested that I was interested in weaving and you know we chatted about it and whatnot and then I moved back there permanently in 72 and they were in the process of getting a rural development grant to buy looms for the community purely as a cultural event to um, to get people moving, to just introduce it into the community. And so there were six looms that were in people's houses. And um, I think some of the product got sold in the craft store, but I believe most people were weaving for themselves. I don't know what happened to the looms. I moved away in 78, so I don't really know what happened to the looms, but um, uh, they continued with a craft store and they would sell some, or at least some of their own weaving products in the craft store. And we would have workshops. We invited people in from um, Nova Scotia, for instance. Um, well, I can't remember her name right now. Uh, just to give workshops and to kind of elaborate, you know, the possibilities of weaving and to sort of expand our experience. And that's it. I, I have a question for you. Uh, was there a story about you weaving something for the royal family? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then I moved to St. John's. Then I was one of these production weavers. And the few of you who said you didn't want weaving to become a business, that's a very smart decision because the joy of it uh, diminishes for sure. And anyhow, I was a production weaver and I focused on weaving rugs. And when, I think it was Prince Andrew, when he got married, like a few days before the wedding, um, the Department of Rural Development was asked to find a gift for the royal family, or for, for that wedding. And uh, we were about to go off on vacation and Georgina Queller, who worked 
for Department of um, Rural Development, rushed over to my studio and picked a rug and that got sent to the royal family. That's the story. That's your, that's your claim to fame. That's my claim to fame. And apparently <laughs> it's a question, there's a new, and a very old Newfoundland trivia game. And apparently there's a question is what gift was sent to Prince Andrew for his wedding? <laughs> Excellent. Um, one of the other people, I think she's still here. Uh, Dee Dee, are you there? Mm -hmm. I can am. You, can you tell us about, about your loom and, and who you're learning weaving from? Yes, um, I am learning weaving, well, I'm, I'm not being taught, I'm being exposed, so she says, by Mabel Manuel, who is my, uh, my second cousin on my grandfather's side. And um, I've been working with her now off and on for about two years. And um, I, I got interested in weaving because I went to Italy back in the 90s and stayed there for about a month. And when I left, I bought this beautiful, heavy, hand-woven scarf. And I had, it, I had it for 20 years and finally it disintegrated. I loved it so much. It was like the Velveteen Rabbit. And uh, I just, I kind of wanted to know how to make that. So I came home, I was living in Ontario for a while and I came home and I was like, well, who better to ask? I have a weaver in the family. She's 93 now, I believe. <laughs> and um, I believe Judy's on here as well. She, she um, uh, is a friend of Mabel's and works with Mabel uh, uh, as well. But Mabel's, uh, she's not um, content until her loom has something on it. She's still at 93. She's like, oh, the loom's naked. I can't, I can't have it. I can't have it. And she's, she's phenomenal and is quite a force of nature, you know. And, um, but my Aunt Maxine um, is from Englee, which is up on the tip of the Northern Peninsula on the East Coast, uh, for those of you who don't know. And uh, she had a loom in her attic for years and years. I think it was actually built into the house. <laughs> they had it and put it up, up above and then, you know, finished the ceiling. And so they weren't able to get it out. Anyway, in the last uh, three or four years, they did, and it was in the shed. So I have it now. And unfortunately, it's not in the greatest of shape. The wood is fine. It's true and, and you know, hasn't warped at all. But all of the heddles are completely covered in rust. Not that hard to replace, I suppose. But so are the are the joints that uh, connect it. You know, all of, all of the metal on it is a bit corroded. And I'm, I'm kind of looking into whether or not I can replace it or try to refurbish it. Um, but I don't really know, because I'm, I'm quite new to it and I'm, I'm still learning a lot, you know? And uh, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping to, to have a pick at that this summer, depending on what happens with the world, of course. Uh, but I also have another loom that I bought out in Woody Point from a woman named Elizabeth Roberts. Um, so I have one of those uh, on the West Coast in Gross Moor, and I have a little house out there. And I have the other one here in St. John's. Um, and I'm hoping, I've been working for the past couple of years too, to create um, what I'm calling a skills collective up in Cowhead, because um, I wanted to start a little business up there. I have a little house in Cow in uh, right in the middle of Gross Moor. And, and um, I just thought, it'd, whenever I'm trying to access money from the government, they keep talking about experiential tourism and all these different kinds of things. But I also wanted it to be a place where the community can um, can teach, you know, in a way. So I'm trying to set up something that will be interactive with the community so that community members can come and teach as well. So, you know, traditional skills, which seem to be more and more important <laughs> uh, these days. But yeah, that's, so that's, that's kind of where I am. I have two looms. Uh, I've never done, um, I haven't put a warp on by myself. I've only ever done it in Mabel's company. So that's going to be my next step. And um, yeah, just trying to see if I can get this one refurbished and hopefully get my other one up and running this summer in Cowhead. Thanks, Didi. No problem. So I think, you know, we, we have limited time today and I feel that this is such a huge, um, huge area that we could do so much more uh, uh, around. And uh, one of the things that, you know, Jessica and I have been talking about is about just kind of creating a database, a, a spreadsheet with a list of who's out there, um, kind of trying to build a community. Um, we're also really interested in those historic looms. I personally would like to start just kind of a, a list of who has what, um, you know, who is doing, uh, who has an old, who has an old loom, what kind of loom is it, you know, who did it come from, who are the weavers that had it, uh, before the current owner. I, I think that would just be a nice thing, a, a historical document um, to do. One of the things that I would like to do as part of this whole 
kind of informal project that Jessica and I have, have started is doing more oral history interviews. Um, and so if people are at home alone and bored during this time of lockdown, I can certainly, we can certainly do some long distance oral history interviews. Renee Finlayson has uh, agreed to be my guinea pig, I think, and do an oral history with me. Um, and that's an open invitation. If there's other people out there who would just like to start getting their stories collected, what they know, uh, some of these names that we've been talking about today, um, it would be great to just kind of build a list of, of the Weaver's uh, past and present and and starting to tell some of those stories like the random island uh like the random island weavers like the weaving department that uh, used to exist with the grenfell uh the grenfell missions and all the grenfell weaving there was a weaving loom in saint anthony we'd like to kind of know a little bit more uh about that jessica do you want to do you want to add anything to that uh it's a funny i was gonna say very very much the same thing um, what's uh, lovely is to hear from different perspectives here, and I've taken, I think, three pages of notes since we <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I find this so fascinating. I'm a little bit of a weaving nerd here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I kind of had this idea. I actually applied for, uh, when I originally applied for my master's, was to do collect stories like this in, in, in Atlantic Canada on weaving because you know, as we've talked about, a lot of these people have passed away and we've gotten their looms. So I think it's really important to kind of get this information while we have it, while we're having these conversations. And so, uh, you know, I thought it would be great to have, I keep referring to this as like a genealogy of like who had the loom, who has it next, where does it come from? Um, and kind of documenting that information, I think is really important. Um, and having a visualization of that as well and, and to keep these conversations going. So, um, you know, we're stuck at home, God knows how long, <laughs> um, but I, I, I invite you to reach out and I, I would love to have conversations with you if you're open to it. Um, and, and also to give people feedback. Some people have started weaving and they to work with themselves. I know how to do that. So we can be so sharing, we can help each other um and just share stories and and see what we can accumulate yeah uh so jessica and i have started up a facebook group so there is a facebook group now called uh weavers and spinners of uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, so you can certainly go there and join that. And I know people have already been sharing, uh, sharing stories and have been posting photographs of their looms and of the stuff they're weaving, which is an amazing uh, kind of thing to see. So we'd certainly encourage you to do that. I know not everyone is on is on Facebook. Um, but if you would just like to kind of be part of this conversation, you can certainly just email me, dale at heritagenl.ca, and we'll kind of add you to our, our list. And um, we'd just like to, this is just kind of an opening conversation. Um, we set up this meeting today and we thought we had 40 minutes. Uh, that's what the free Zoom hosting uh, limit is, but I just got a little notification from Zoom that they're going to extend our time limit. So. Uh, we might be able to throw it open uh, a little bit to to the people who are are listening in. We've got 43 participants uh, listening in today. Um, does anyone have any questions for our weavers, or do the weavers that we've talked to already have questions for each other? Um, I saw here in our Zoom group chat that Maria Kilfoyle had uh, some. I asked if they could say some words about the jacquard loom in the makerspace, I believe. It's, this is really amazing. Dale and Jessica, thanks for starting this. And uh, you'll hear from what I have to say that um, I've been really eager to connect with all of the weavers in the province. Yeah. Uh, so I, I manage makerspace out in Cornerbrook. We have a uh, makerspace that has a lot of digital design tools like 3D printers, laser cutter, um, CNC machines, but I've also been doing a lot of textiles and because we're situated on the Granville campus of Memorial, there's a really strong fine arts department, including VA, and so they teach fiber arts there. And so even though there isn't in Stephenville still the CNA program, there's a lot of fiber arts going on. There's a lot of people that choose to live in Western. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can eat my breakfast. Um, so because of, because of all that interest, I've been sort of promoting that and did a project around um, creating a really loom, backstrap loom, and took it into a classroom to use that as a platform for innovation. 
And then with my first foray into that, we used the makerspace to make looms, those looms, simple ones on the So unlike what Jessica was saying, these ones are all identical and perfect. <laughs> but then people can add to them. And we've also incorporated some wire that lights up in the warp or in the weft threads. So here's an example of one, our first prototype. So just include, this wire lights up at night. This is some silk thread that I got up in Woody Point last summer from at, um, Jennifer Galliott's studio. So where all of this is going is um, the opposite of all these historical looms. We, to go along with the digital tools that I have, because I just see textiles as one extension of making that's on the same continuum as all of these digital technologies. Um, I applied for a grant and got it to, to get a digital to card loom. So we just put out the tender this in February. Um, no, it's made in Norway, it's Tron Root Engineering, if anyone's familiar with it. And so we're going to have that here in Newfoundland and it's actually on its way. They've finished building it and it's been shipped. I see Jessica going like this. <laughs> Um, but what I haven't had is all this connection to everybody here because you guys are the ones that should know about it. And um, I would like to also host in the makerspace if people are interested in some workshops. Sounds like there's so much expertise here and interest in, in sharing and getting encouraging that culture of making around textiles and weaving again. Also the inks, like Anna with your inks, and I'm looking at my notes, uh, so exciting. And um, that was Stephanie that talked about reusing materials and incorporating those in weaves. So um, I just wanted to put that information out there. And then um, I don't know what else to say about that, but if people are interested, they can email me. I, I will post on the Facebook page and then I can keep everybody posted. But what I know is would people be interested in coming to do workshops? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that's fantastic and really exciting i think it's great i mean i mean it's so it's so amazing to see like some people here like katie saying she was a field worker and then and then yourself and kaylee who are mentioning kind of going into the future with textiles and and, and weaving and i think that's phenomenal to kind of have those parallels and bring them together so oh great. i just say one more thing about that yeah thanks jessica that digital loom um that I actually don't know the, the user, the person who was speaking about the jacquard loom already and the feminist perspective around loom. That was also my entry because I'm, I'm a technical person, a physicist. And um, I was just going to say that with the digital loom, what it basically is, each thread then becomes, it's like a pixel. And so you can import an image and weave that, or you can do traditional patterns. So it, it, it just opens up the possibilities. And it's probably a good entryway for people that don't know anything about weaving, but know something about digital technologies. So. Maria, can I ask, do, do, you, do you have a sense that there might be, for example, residency opportunities with the Jeckard Loom with the makerspace? Yes, I can imagine that. So having a, like a maker in residence. And so we'll have to, uh, <laughs> that's writing our new proposal now for the next round of funding. So this is a really timely meeting as well because I want to have a whole section in there about this. Um, because I do think that it's just a, con a connection to the history of Newfoundland. So we, we, all, everyone here knows more about than I do. Oh, one person I want to mention, he's also here, Pierre Garrick, and he's one of the users of the Makers. Hi. <laughs> so I just wanted to mention him as well because he partnered with me on the project we did at the After Dark Arts Festival <coughs> uh, using the backdrop room. Um, and, and there's a general kindred spirit with everybody here. How you doing? Can, um, yeah, this is Pierre. Uh, my interest uh, came with uh, working with uh, Catherine McCausland in uh, St. John's with her. Uh, um, yeah, my video doesn't seem to want to start. Um, Catherine McCausland, in, uh, she's a felt artist and we work together on combining electronics and lighting into uh, material and uh, I've been continuing that kind of work with uh, you know on the west coast uh, thanks to uh, Maria's um, makerspace you know that she that she uh, 
di directs and uh, that's my background. So I'm available if anybody has any questions on incorporation of uh, electronics and light into weave or other thing like that. And uh, certainly Maria has done a lot of work on that. Great, thank you, Pierre. Thank you. Okay, uh, any, other, any other questions or comments? Um, Dale, could you put your email address somewhere in case people, I'm, I've actually avoided Facebook until now <laughs> with the COVID thing, so I'm quite a newcomer to Facebook. So uh, just in case I don't find it or could, could I email somebody as well? Is there some contact? Uh, Maybe somebody yeah. could put an email in the chat window. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, and my, my email, dale at heritagenl.ca. And what I can do is I can actually send around um, uh, Jessica and, and, and myself, I can send around our contact information to the email list that was generated through the registration. So you can all get that. Um, and maybe just to just to put this out there as well, uh, I am I am probably the one person uh, here today who is not a textile person uh, in any shape or form. Um, my role with Heritage NL is is kind of as a community facilitator. My job is to kind of. Uh, broker connections in, in communities, um, which is what we're doing uh, today, hopefully. So if there's, uh, you know, if there are projects that you are interested in and you are looking for outside, uh, uh, you know, kind of letters of support or whatnot. Um, so I work with the Heritage Foundation of Newfoundland and Labrador. I'm also adjunct faculty in the Department of Folklore. So if there are projects that we can kind of work together on, um, there are often kind of funding uh, avenues for certain types of projects that we might be able to, to look into. So if someone wants to do something around um, sharing skills and bridging heritage and technology, you know, those are all things that I would be very, very interested in, in helping out with in, in some way. Like I said, the, the goal of today is just kind of to start a conversation and uh, we don't know where exactly it's going, but uh, the idea is just to kind of start to kind of build up a, a community of people who are interested in the same kinds of things and who are um, willing to share and, and collaborate more together. Okay, with that, maybe uh, Jessica, do you, do you have any final words that you want to say? Um, I just want to thank everyone for uh, stopping in. I know there's some people on here who are uh, from the province and also outside of the province, which is exciting um, from a few different uh, pools of weaving communities. Um, and thank you so much for coming together. And I think it's really important right now during these times, especially to kind of come together and connect. Um, and I think this is a great place to start. And like Dale said, I'm, very, I'm also on board to help with any projects. I'm very much interested in this. I'm pretty sure I talk about sleep, uh, weaving in my sleep. So, <laughs> um, you know, I, I think it's important to support our communities, especially right now and, and moving forward. Um, and so if there's any way I can help with any projects or get something started, or if you want to bounce ideas, I'm, I'm very much open to it. So please reach out. Um, Jessica, you've been doing some Facebook Live yes, stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I've been kind of weaving on a tabletop loom and doing some small things at home. Um, I did, uh, I have a little tapestry loom from Ikea of all places <laughs> that I've been kind of displaying some, some techniques and stuff that I'm doing. So um, <clears throat> if you'd like to add me to Facebook, go ahead. My name is Jessica Tamara McDonald because there's so many Jessica McDonalds in the world apparently. Um, and there you can see, uh, I just do some live videos about what I'm uh, about making and I'm really focused in on hands and I love that connection that Haley was talking about, the connections you have to objects. Um, so kind of just showing, you know, hands making and getting in there and kind of being one with the project um, as well. Uh, if you want to add on Instagram, um, my name is my underscore woven words. I'm trying to do some more live stuff on there, but on there you can see some videos because I think it's really important, you know, like there's literature and there's there's writings about these stuff, but the visualization is really important so people can see the act of weaving and also an appreciation happens with that as well. And so I have some videos on there just of like, just of weaving or just of threading the loom. And then, you know, you, you kind of get in touch with like and understand weaving a little bit more, which I think, you know, 
with that comes an appreciation, which is important. I think this might be another role that uh, Heritage NL might be able to play um, in terms of uh, trying to showcase information. I know we have some other people who are who are part of the conversation today who are spinners. Um, I know Amelia Reimers here who is telling me about her drop spindles that she has. Uh, so if there are ways to um, even just do some short little scheduled Facebook Live mm -hmm. videos that we could partner on, uh, just kind of to, to promote that. I, we're very interested obviously in, in the, con the situation we're in now about doing some of this stuff online. So if any of you would like to have a chat with me about doing uh, just a little demonstration, an online demonstration on Facebook Live at some point. Um, uh, just hit me up. Yeah, we'll we'll circulate uh, Jessica and my information, like I said, and we we would love to put more stuff uh, out there for people to to view. So if you're doing something and want to do a, a co-hosted uh, Facebook Live video, I'm sure we can figure out how to do that. Absolutely. Okay, so with that, um, I think I will, we will wrap this uh, up. I'll say thank you to all of our participants today. Thank you for everyone who joined in from near and far, people uh, from Florida and beyond. Uh, it's been great to have all of you here in the chat. Um, this is, uh, I think, being recorded, I, uh, fingers crossed. So if it is, we'll be able to put it on, on Facebook. Um, and so you'll be able to go back and all those notes you were frantically trying to take, you'll be able to go back and check on, on some of those. Um, this is uh, the first time we've tried this. So if you liked it, let us know. Uh, if you have suggestions or would like to see something uh, more focused or perhaps you know, a one-on-one -on -one kind of oral history interview with, with a, a, a long-standing weaver, um, we're, we're open to all sorts of suggestions. So get in touch with Jessica or myself. Again, thank you all very much and go home and uh, I guess you are home. Uh, wash your hands <laughs> and uh, stay safe, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Stay safe, stay safe everyone.